my first backpack review, so uh, be gentle. This is the Rode backpack. Notably, not a microphone or an interface, but come on, it can't be that tough to review a backpack, right? I've noticed a few takes on this, saying it might be super niche, and I don't necessarily agree. I mean, it actually is a popular trend for media backpacks lately, with lots of brands getting in on the action. Even Peter McKinnon released one a while back. I think the one thing for it to be successful, though, is versatility. So let's see if that is something we can get out of this bag. Now, there is a lot going on here, and in true road fashion, it's well-engineered, and at the same time being quite aesthetically pleasing. Let's start with the accents. The logo on the front and the O on the handle and shoulder strap is embroidered. It's a really nice touch. And the other big accent is that the top handle is Alcantara, a really premium feeling microfiber touch. Also, there is some more Alcantara on the shoulder straps. Now, you might notice that this is the same fabric on the NTH100 ear cups. Now, while Alcantara looks and feels fantastic, it does have some drawbacks as it soaks up the oils on your skin and it doesn't look great as it gets dirtier. That said, unlike suede, which this is supposed to be a counterpart of, this can be easily cleaned. Just keep in mind that you will have to clean it if you wanna keep it looking rather decent. Otherwise, you have ballistic nylon, which lends itself to the premium vibes of this backpack. Now, when you open up the laptop compartment, it is a nice nylon. One thing to note, there isn't a ton of padding between your back and the laptop. It's not a massive detail. Just keep it in mind when the backpack isn't on your back. Inside that compartment, you have two separate pockets. So guessing you could carry a laptop and a tablet, or I guess even two computers if that's how you rock it. As for the front pocket, it's the same material as the computer slot and meant for your microphones. Hey, want to see something fun? Somebody at Road just had a shiver run up their spine. I love it. What is cool about this though, is even after the mics are in, you still have a bit of room in there. So cables, headphones, whatever, more room is a good thing. As for that main compartment here though, the top side of that is nylon from the other compartments. And then this brushed polyester, which does actually feel good. And of course, this is where your Rodecaster Pro is slated to go. Speaking of, a decent amount of room on top after the RCP is in the bag, and this little cable area top can be moved around to your liking. And if you're carting this thing around for those multi-person podcasts, you will need that room for cables. Also, there is another pocket on top of this compartment, possibly another spot to put another tablet or whatever. And lastly, back out on the outside of the bag, you have these pouches on the side conveniently to carry your PSA1 or PSA1 Plus. And you have four hooks on the front of that that allow you to attach whatever you want with carabiners. Now for an off-axis rejection test of the Rode backpack. This is me speaking directly. Wait, what the hell am I doing? Not a microphone. Not a microphone. And I know what you're thinking. This thing does seem to be super niche, though there are a ton of Roadcaster owners that will love this. And with the new stock of gear that's slated to come out, I can imagine this is gonna be on a lot of people's lists. That said, what if you're more of a media mogul and you wanna do multiple things with your bag, not just audio? Is this thing worthwhile? Well, it isn't horrible. I mean, lenses do fit easily into these mic pockets and easy enough to get cameras in the bag as well. Really, with the large open pocket and the ability to get those camera bag dividers, this open cavity could be your playground. But yeah, never mind. One of the coolest things about this pocket here, though, is it is wide open if you aren't using a mixer. And honestly, if you work for Rode, you might want to plug your ears. But this thing could fit almost any board outside of a 16 channel. So really, if you just need a gig bag, this might do well. But I think for the most part, all of this kind of might be a bit of a stretch. This thing is remarkably Rode. And no matter how niche you think it is, I'm willing to bet they will be moving units rather quickly. Now, there are a lot of pros here, as we've covered, and really a really well-built backpack. Absolutely no complaints here. As for the cons, not really any, though I would have loved a small front pocket for the small things, like wallet, phone, keys, that kind of thing. I say that, but then of course, right in here, you do have a spot for your keys. Forgot about that. That's generally my most used pocket on a backpack, but honestly, there is still a ton of space inside that I can probably find space for it all. So should you buy it? I mean, if you're an actual road warrior, this thing's probably a great bet if you're taking that podcast setup on the road. It's perfectly developed for that. And honestly, for someone like me that has multiple bags for my gear, 
I know the beauty of something like this. If you aren't a full road warrior, there is still value here if you're taking an audio setup on the go. The, this thing is quite handy for that. Perhaps even a voiceover artist that needs to bring their gear on vacation and are always shoving their mic in the same spot as their underwear. So if you're on the fence for this thing, it's a pretty easy recommendation to push you over the edge. And as we get more of that road gear spilling out, let's see how much more of that new stuff will fit in there as well. Let me know what you think though. Is this thing on your wish list? Cheers.